Hallelujah. Things are happening quickly, rapidly, fastly, however you want to say it. But they're definitely happening. We have specific prophetic events that have occurred. I want to discuss some of them today. Turn to Matthew 24 for a sec. In verse 3. Now as Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when these things will be. And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age, which is the age of grace. Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. That no one what? Well, the world is under a great deception, aren't they? Amen. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. There's a lot of Christians saying that they're Christians, and they're really not. Because if they're not a follower, they're not a believer. Amen. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Is that happening? See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against Nathan. This is ethnic group. Kingdoms will rise against kingdoms, and there will be famines. And there are famines. Is there famines in the world anywhere? Yeah. Is there pestilence? Is there earthquakes? In fact, what was, there's a huge earthquake that happened uh, today. What was it again? New Guinea? Or, yeah. Huge. And they're waiting for the tsunamis to hit now. And there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. These are the beginning of sorrows. So we've been in the beginning of sorrows for a period of time already. And then they will deliver you up to tribulation. So we know tribulation will come afterwards. And then great tribulation. And I'm sharing this because this is all being fulfilled right now. Things are being released. In fact, there are seals that have been broken already. So, you know, even when a seal is broke, it doesn't mean that everything's going to happen immediately. It means it's the beginning of something. When something is broke, when God breaks a seal, it's the process. It's the process. Now, the seals are associated with, most of them are associated with the beginning of sorrows. At least the first three of them are. But from the fourth on, the four, when the fourth seal is broken, it is going to be the entrance of tribulation. And then the rest of the seals will be broken in tribulation with the bowls and the trumpets. Go to Matthew 21. In verse 1, it says, Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to, this place is called Beth Fagi, uh, something like that. Beth Fagi. Sounds good. And, and the word Beth Fagi means house of um, unripe figs or like immature or beginning. In other words, like a beginning of new fruit. At the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village of opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you. Lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, and fowl of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set Jesus on them. A very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed be he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved and saying, Who is this? So multitudes said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Then Jesus went into the temple. Hello. He went where? into the temple and what did he do and he drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple these are called money changers and overturned the tables 
and all the money changers and the seats of those who sold those or those who possess those places. Now, this is what is happening right now. God is intervening. And he's beginning to turn over the money changers. Now, you know, ever since the Tower of Babel, everything's been controlled by money. Money, 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 money. You do this, you get paid for this. You do this. Everything is money. Money is controlled by everything, legally and Ill illegally. Because to people, money is power. Without money, you can't have anything. You can have all things in Christ. Amen. He can bring things to you. But he also provides in multiple ways. But in this, this is a bondage right from the Tower of Babylon. And, and in this, Jesus went in there. When he turned over the tables, it was a prophetic sign. In verse 13, and he said to him, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Wow. Now, so Jesus started off in a place which is recognizes unripe figs or beginning of new fruits. Bithany, which he went to, is known as a house of figs or affliction. Affliction. Because it says that he went to Bithany. Now, he was pre right now he's preparing the way of all his children. This is what he said to me this morning. He said, I prepare the way of my children, for I am dismantling the money changers that serve the harlot. That served the harlot. That's the harlot of Babylon. And um, I will restore and I will vindicate as I sit in the midst of its afflictions. In other words, he's sitting in the midst of the afflictions of, with his people. But he said during this, he's going to expose it, dismantle it, and he's going to vindicate all of us. I will restore my house in the affliction that surrounds us, for I will be in the midst of her to vindicate with restitution. This is going to happen any moment. In fact, its process is already reaching. It's Why? Because this has been controlling humanity with their money creating chaoses and then financing the destruction and then they finance the review. Humanity, they use humanity as their slaves of wealth and the fall of the harlot of Babylon has started. It is the fall of the harlot. This is not the fall of the beast or the rise of the beast. That isn't even not near, near yet. Go to Daniel chapter 7. Why are we getting this? Because God wants you to know what's going on. He wants you to be prepared. Because great things are about to happen. I can't go into all the time sequences because I don't have enough time today. But I can tell you that the fulfillment of Jubilee will be coming at the end of this month, the 25th, somewhere around there. And that is also known as the Feast of Trumpets, which is also known God's judgment. So he'll release, he's going to judge his people, but he's not going to release the judgment yet. People have 10 days to get it together to atonement. Many people are going to go under a judgment, even some of them for one whole year. Daniel 7:15. And I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near to one of those who stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of these things. Those great beasts which are four are four kings which arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever and ever. So we know this is the end result, isn't it? Then I wish to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful with teeth of iron and its nails of bronze, which devour broken pieces and trample the residue with its feet. And ten horns that were on its heads, on its head and the other horn which came up before which three fell, Namely, that horn which had eyes and a mouth which spoke pompous words, whose appearance was greater than his fellow. I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them. Until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was made in the favor of the saints of the Most High, and the 
and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Thus, thus he said, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all the other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall rise, arise from this kingdom, and another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High. Is any of that happening anywhere? Globally. And shall intend to change times in law. Are they trying to change the Constitution? Amen. Then the saints will be given into his hands for a time and time and a half. That's three and a half years. That has not come yet. But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it. Then the kingdom and dominion, the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven, shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Now, again, this, was known, this is known as the rise of the beast after our possession of the land for a time of plenty, during which we call time of plenty, and harvest. Does everybody get it? Again, I, th this is known as the rise of the beast, but that has not come yet. And I want to share this because the fall of the harlot must come before the rise of the beast. Because the fall of the heart is, is the Babylonian, economic, world, medical, media, music, industry, everything run by the Antichrist regime. It's known as the Babylon or the harlot operation. Is everybody okay? So we got governments, education, medical, everything. The United States and the world has been secretly in bondage all the way up to this day. Why? They've been serving money and not even knowing it. The life of money was more important than life itself to people. Hallelujah. We have what we call present-day pharaohs now. <laughs> the Vatican. In fact, if, I don't know if you saw it or not. And this has all happened because the queen died. We're going to talk about the queenie. The Vatican released a command to move all money to the central bank. All their diocese move all their money to the central bank. The Pope gave the order. Because the Queen died. So the, where is the main central bank? The main central bank is in the city of London. That is the main operation of the Antichrist banking system. They've been using the Vatican for years to funnel money. This is how it operates. Is everybody okay? Now listen, so the command was to move all of, all of their mo money and all, from all their headquarters to the Antichrist money place because the Queen of England <laughs> has died. Actually, she's been dead a while. They just finally announced it. This is a prophetic point in time now, but she has been dead. But ever since now that she has been announced, things a prophetic move is going on. Prophetic things are being released. Now, uh, think about this for a second, because we know that seven means complete and perfect and so forth. So the queen has been um, in office as a queen for 70 years and 70 weeks. Now, the next p seven days is this Tuesday, or the 13th, uh, yeah, Tuesday. So I don't know if something's going to happen, but we don't know. Now, when you think about this, this is powerful. Every president that has been in the United States, except for Trump and another one, uh, what's his name? Van, Van, Van Yuren, something like that, have all connect bloodlines to England. Every single one. So you got to look at here we have the city of London that controls all the, in other words, it is the central part of the world where the Antichrist regime is controlling all things. Now think about this. Man, this hit me this morning big time. Some of us will remember when the Beatles came on. Not the Bugs, the band. Hello. Many great musicians and groups came from England at that time. 
they were released to bring a prophetic move of music. But it was a demonic prophetic move of music. Does everybody understand that? It enticed people's souls of the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life to become rebellious. From that point on, rebellion hit the world like it never hit before. And the music kept increasing, increasing, increasing. And every, most of us, I fell into it. Most of us who were in that generation fell into it. You know, we weren't even checking the words out. We were just, just let's do dope. Let's get high. Let's do this. You know, never realizing even the Rolling Stones. And they had that famous song, Guess My Name. His name is Lucifer. How many demonic things that individuals were connected to. Before they release any music, they bring all the master copy into an occult cal cauldron area. And witches pray over it and call up demons and attach themselves to every bit of music that goes out. Pew, pew, pew. And so when people listen to this music, they open themselves up to demons and demonic influence that promotes drugs, addiction, that promotes wickedness, that promotes murder and hatred, that promotes homosexuality, lesbian and transgenderism. All of these things are by demonic influence, every single one. Rap and everything else. All of these musics that promotes, promotes such wickedness and people don't, oh, it's soulish. Not, open, not realizing that they are opening their spirit to demons. And the Bible tells us we don't fight flesh and blood, but powers of darkness, wickedness, and heavenly places. Ever since then, things have been happening. But I'm telling you, God is standing up. The prayers of the saints have reached, and enough wickedness has been brought before him. Just like when he flooded the earth during Noah's time because of the wickedness, now he's bringing judgment. But judgment first begins in the house of God. So those who are in the house of God will be judged first. And that judgment is already coming and it's been here for a while. But then there's a final judgment. will be the end of this month. And people that are not right will have to go through a judgment period of time. Who are not willing to return. Go to Revelation 17. Do you remember the song, um, London Bridges? London Bridges falling down. Hello. Think about this. This was a prophetic song. What was the end result? My fair lady. Who do you think my fair lady is? It's not only the queen physical, but it's the harlot spiritually. So now they're saying London Bridges, the bridges, are falling down all everything that's supporting it right now. Never realizing that we were singing a song that was going to be a prophetic influence and a, a marker of God's prophetic time. So the queen being released. Now, I want you to know that her son will never become king, no matter what they do. He's never going to make it to the ceremony. Revelation 17, verse 1. Are we there? Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with wine of her fornication. You know, fornication is an area of not only, uh, you know, when we were out there doing drugs and whatever, and many people have sold their lives out to drugs, to alcohol, to uh, they've broken covenants, they've all kinds of things. And it, and it brings people a delusion. And, and they fornicated. You know, Jesus divorced Israel because of his fornication of worshiping of other gods. Verse 3, and he carried me away into the spirit, into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and the pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of, of harlots and the abomination on the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the what? Blood of saints and with the blood of martyrs of Jesus. 
And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. And the angel said to me, why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and, seven, and ten horns. The beast that you saw was and, and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel. Those names are not written, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. Here is the mind which has the wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. Now I want you to know that there's a, a place called Seven Hills, which is known as the Vatican. Okay, but it's also associated with the seven areas of education, military, all of these things, uh, governmental, media, music, all of these major seven things that the uh, harlot controls to bring people under a control of mind control and money control. Does everybody understand? There are also seven kings and five have fallen. One is and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is of the seven and is going to perdition. And I'm not going to go into the, all of it. Anyways, the seven hills is known as the Vatican. Okay, now think about this. What does the Vatican also associate with it? It associates with another queen, doesn't it? Does anybody know about that queen? They call her Mary. See, praying to the dead is an abomination. Does everybody understand that? Praying to the dead is an abomination. I'm sure that Mary being with the Lord right now, I know she doesn't hear any of these prayers or anything because you can't get to nobody <laughs> except for G through Jesus, amen? If she would see what was going on right now, she'd be really upset with it. But yes, the Vatican is associated with the queen. Also, Nimrod was associated with the queen, his own mother. So we see that Babylonian uh, system from Nimrod on is still running. But God said, I'm going to tear I'm kicking over the tables, I'm changing, I'm removing their seeds, and I'm going to establish my government and my kingdom here to those who are willing to submit and follow. See, the United States is in bankrupt, is a bankrupt corporation, and is still to this day paying taxes to England, but people don't know that. And when you look at a dollar bill, there's a pyramid on it, right? It's got an all C and I and everything, and well, on the top of it, that all C and I is known as the harlot that oversees the beast. She's known as the queen. But physical queen now is dead. When you look at this whole family is going to be exposed big time. Now think about this. They are called the royal family. They carry a royal bloodline. They always try to intermarriage with their own blood. But they're not the royal. We are the royal blood. We come from Jesus. They come from the harlot. They come from the Antichrist, Satan. Amen. And Jeremiah 44, verse 24. Moreover, Jeremiah said to all the people and to all the women, hear the word of the Lord and all Ju Judah and who are in the land of Egypt. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, You and your wives have spoken with your mouths and fulfilled with your hands, saying, We will surely keep our vows that we have made to burn incense to the queen of heaven. In other words, that's where they're giving, it says paying tribute. And pour our drink offerings to her. You will surely keep your vows and perform your vows. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, all Judah, who dwell in the land of Egypt. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, says the Lord, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, The Lord God lives. Behold, I will watch over them for adversity and not for good. And all men of Judah who are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by famine until there is an end to them. Yet a small number who escape the sword shall return from the land of Egypt 
to the land of Judah and all the remnant of Judah who have gone to the land of Egypt to dwell there shall know whose words shall, will stand, mine or theirs. And this shall be a sign to you, says the Lord, that I will punish you in this place and that you may know that my words will surely stand against you for adversity. So we see here there's an, in, they, they were paying tribute uh, to the queen of heaven, physically and spiritually. I mean, they used to worship this queen physically. Amen? Just like they worship the pope. Hallelujah. But, but in this, we see that, uh, again, they, they profess to be of the royal blood. Just think, okay, so you got, uh, people are, the economic over there has gone down tremendously. I mean, they're hurting big time. Europe is hurting big time because Russia won't sell them any oil. Does everybody understand it? Why? Unless they're paying with ruble that's backed by gold and silver. See, Putin already knows. Putin is a uh, nationalist, not a globalist. Him and Trump and all the others that are what we call nationalists uh, or, or not globalists, they stood together. All of this was pre-planned. All of this was to awaken the world of the Antichrist and the evilness and wickedness, the child abuse and everything else that's going on, the bloodshed of innocent. Many English individuals are awakening now. Again, all over the world. And remember that all of those bands that came over with a prophetic <laughs> Antichrist uh, prophetic release that have turned many hearts and minds over to Satan. That's why God now has his word, his music, his infiltration. Things are breaking. Go to Revelation 18, verse 1. It says, after these things I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having a great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried out mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of what? Demons and a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, unless you receive her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Render her to her just as she rendered to you, and repay her double according to her works in the cup which she has mixed, mixed double for her. For in a measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen and am no widow and will not see sorrow. Therefore, her plagues will come in one day. One day. And one day, you will see a tremendous trampling and destruction and dismantlement of the harlot. Death and mourning and famine. And she will be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord, God who judges her. So we see this judgment is around the corner. In 1 Timothy chapter 6. You know, what does God warn us about? He says, you have robbed me of my tithes and offerings. You are cursed. Why? Because they love money. They're more concerned in building their own houses, their own this, their own that, and everything about them instead of offering, giving part. He says, how do you think I get to my stuff out? How do you think I get Bibles out? How do you think I, I, I get food out to people? How do you think? Well, people still are, you know, they proclaim to be Christians, but they're not willing to participate in the outreach that God has commanded. They just do their own thing. First Timothy chapter 6. You know, many people that are cursed don't even realize they're cursed until it manifests. All of this happened. Sometimes judgment doesn't come instantly. 
it's a pro it comes in a certain time when you least expect it. First Timothy six six. Let's speak it. Hallelujah. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can bring, carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But to those who desire to be rich, fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men into destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Now, who promotes the love of money? Powers of darkness. For which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But you men and women of God flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For among men will be what? Lovers of money is the first thing. Because many people are still not willing to come out. Lovers of money boasters. Lovers of themselves. Lovers of money boasters. Proud blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. Slanders which, without self-control. Pr brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people do what? Turn away. No association. Second Corinthians 6, verse 17. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. That's what we just heard in Revelation. Come out from among them. Amen. Go to Revelation 6. It's verse 1. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying, with a loud voice like thunder, come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on it had a bow. Well, Jesus wouldn't have a bow. Hello, he'd have a sword. And a crown was given to him. Well, he doesn't need a crown given to me. He owns them all. And he went out conquering and to conquer. Now, I want you to explain, uh, explain something here. Because the white horse is associated. And, and, and when it says a crown, well, there's another word for a crown. It's called corona. 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 Hello? Was there a virus called corona? And it says it went out to conquer right went out to and conquering into conquer in other words we are looking at this possibly being the first seal which because when the coronavirus was released it was actually on hanukkah now the world the jews celebrate hanukkah when we celebrate christmas but our celebration of christmas is not really the time uh, in December was the birth of Jesus. Jesus wouldn't be birthed at that. Uh, he would be conceived, but he would be birthed on a feast. Does everybody understand that? So if you take December to, sub to September, that is nine months. And I truly believe Jesus was born on the Feast of Trumpets because it's known as the beginning of a new year. Now, it's also known as God's judgment. So Jesus came. Now, only he can fulfill the Feast of Trumpets. Does everybody understand that? Only he can fulfill all the feasts. And he hasn't fulfilled the Feast of Trumpets yet, has he? 
So when the next feast is celebrated of trumpet, he will be fulfilling it as the king of judgment and removing his church. Does everybody understand? Amen? So we see here that that was the first seal that was supposedly broken. And it was started with the coronavirus. And verse 2, or verse 3, when he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, come and see. And another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to one who sat in it to take peace from the earth, and that the people should kill one another, and they would be given to him a great sword. Well, listen, this is also associated with war. Red is associated with war. And in this, we see that not only people were killing one another, people are stealing from one another. Look at all the riots and everything that's going on during that time. And they're still killing one another. There's still wars going on and all kinds of things that are happening. Amen? And peace was taken. The whole world lost peace. The whole world. The whole earth. Verse 5, when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature saying, come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hands. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil in the wine. First of all, the oil in the wine is us. Does everybody get it? Now remember that these things are all going to come into a fulfillment. There's things that begin and it goes all the way to the end. So things will begin to increase. So in this, we see that the black horse or the black rider or the four seal or the horseman is known as the angel of death. Black is associated with death. And we know that many people are going to die more, especially people that have been or sicknesses or diseases or whatever. Many of them are going to die unless they repent. And the scales now represent not only God's judgment, but you weigh gold, you weigh silver. Does everybody understand? So there's going to be a transfer of wealth. And the Bible says that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the righteous. And the fourth seal is not yet. But when the fourth seal is broken, it will begin the stages into the fifth seal into tribulation. Is everybody okay? That's just a little information to be bring you up to date on what's happening. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. In verse 6. However we speak what? Wisdom among those who are mature. In other words, they can understand. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. Look, at, you try and explain all this to an unbeliever, they ain't going to get it. In fact, you try and explain this to a non non-filled Christian, they're not going to get it. Hallelujah. Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, eye has not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his what? His spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of the man, except for the spirit of the man which is in him, even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that God has freely given to us. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, the carnal man, the physical, does not receive the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned, just like what I said. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 2. Verse 
I don't know if I shared this or not, but they had a they had an interview with a woman, and uh, she was a, a fentanyl dealer. And uh, I'm thinking, why are you guys interviewing her, not busting her? And she was explaining how she, she brought every the whole media, the whole film crew into her kitchen, into her lab. And they filmed the whole thing, how she was cutting fentanyl and saying, see, I use the best stuff to cut it. I don't, I don't use the other stuff that kills people. And she cooked it and then cooled it, and torched it, did everything in it, shook it, shifted it, and then weighed everything in it. Her and her girlfriends were over weighing it, and they let her do it. She makes $15,000 a day. And I'm thinking, why are they allowing us to do it? And I forgot what state this was in. Obviously, it's a democratic state. And they're allowing her to do it because so many people are cutting it with other stuff that are killing people. Now, I don't know if you know or not, but they're putting vending machines up where you can get, um, what do you, what is it? Narcan? Yeah, Narcan in a vending machine. So let's just hang around a vending machine, uh, shoot dope, smoke dope, snort dope. If anyone blacks out, 25 cents, there you go, poof, whatever it costs. I'm sure it's more than 25 cents. But, you know, they got to make money on that, too. So let's feed them the drugs, and then let's get them something that will bring them back so they can come back the next day. But this is how the world system of Babylon is. This is how the heart is. And people that are partaking of it are being drunk. They're being deluded. Great deception is going out. Just where Jesus said, look it, you keep on this, I'm going to release a great delusion where you will never come out of it again. And I'll come and visit you in hell. Hallelujah. All right, First John chapter 2. Man, I could go, man, bust the girl. What's the matter with you guys? You know how many people watched that flick and said, man, I'm going to start dealing dope. Heck, if she can make 15 grand a day, I'll take five. I mean, this is the carnal mind. This is how the enemy... Hallelujah. All right, verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. And if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, which is under the control of the harlot, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. Hello. Once the harlot is out of the way, which it's already begun, he who does the will of God will abide forever. Little children, is the last hour, and as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us, because they weren't willing to maintain the course. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might fulfill their own will and be manifested, that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. In other words, we don't have an excuse. It's a matter of being in a relationship with the Lord and the Holy Spirit and being led by the Spirit. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. We are in a great time right now. We are watching a great shift. Things are about to explode. There will be more earthquakes. There will be chaos. There will be this and that. In fact, I want you to know just in case, that there will probably be a blackout at some time. And in this blackout, it could, I don't, nobody knows really how long. It could be for 10 days. There'll be no internet. There'll be no nothing. And the purpose of the blackout is because they're not going to allow the enemy to know and communicate what's going on. I really believe that it's going to be an invasion of the, of the Lord's army into all of these places. So they can't escape. They're busting all kinds of people, especially in the human trafficking and all kinds of things. Judges that are involved too now. More and more things will be exposed to the surface, but I want you to know that that transfer of wealth is lying at the door. Amen? It's, things are getting ready to happen. Don't get swayed. 
Don't get emotionally drifted. Don't get lazy. Maintain your foundation. Stay strong. Stay assembled. Stay filled. And stay on top of things. Amen? So that you don't get distracted. It's important. Because though many people are going to miss this opportunity of what's getting ready to happen because they're stubborn, rebellious, self-willed, and they're going to miss it. And it's just like the, um, the, the parable of the wise and the foolish. Those who stayed filled, stayed close, got in. Those who didn't, they missed it. Don't miss it. Be ready. Amen. Do whatever it takes. Praise God. Father, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. And we thank you for your mercies, grace, and faithfulness, and for your prophetic insight that was released today, Lord. We thank you. Protect it with your seed and the blood, and let it grow and bear fruit for your glory. And Lord, as you've given us this info, <laughs> help us to spread the word and prepare for what's getting ready to happen this month. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.